So you're here because your radiator is freezing cold, yeah? And you're on YouTube and you're trying to find out how to get it working again. Well, one thing I'll say to you from a professional plumber's perspective is to not make these four mistakes. Some of which I've seen perpetrated on other YouTube channels. Number one. My knees are bad and people keep commenting saying, kneel on some knee pads. And you're right, I can't find them so I might as well kneel on my cricket jumper. Oh, the pain. Number one, and this is something I see people do all the time in videos about the TRV pin, okay? Now we've got a lovely Taddo valve here. I'm just gonna whip off. Normally this is what you do if you've got a stuck TRV pin, right? The people say, get a hammer and whack that. Or tap it, whack that. Well, i tell you what happened to me when I was in a place called Compass House in Cambridge when I was an apprentice. I hit a TRV pin like that and it flew out. And there was about, I don't know, bar and a half's worth of water and four stories of radiators above me. Now, you know, I could put my finger over it, but it did get increasingly warm. I mean, the radiator came on, but also I sprayed the ceiling. So this is what you should do. Do not hit it with a hammer. Grab the TRV pin with a set of grips and just start wiggling it. And usually they're in this locked position down here. Just give it a nice little pull and loosen it off and get it moving, okay? Once you've done that, give it a little spray with some WD-40 or something to lubricate it a little bit. And then after that, try to think to yourself throughout the summer when these are generally shut, maybe you should open them once a month to make sure that they don't get stuck and you come across that problem again in the future. Number two. Right then everyone, I'm at the show at the moment, just interrupting the video to let you know, and I'm on Taddo stand at the moment. It might look backwards, but it says Taddo. I'm gonna be going back to Laura's house next week to try to install 10 Taddo stats and also the bridge and hub and everything in pretty much an hour to an hour and a half without her knowing. So make sure you hit subscribe and come back for that. If you haven't checked out any of the stuff that Taddo do, I've got their system on my house. It works really, really well. Emily's at home at the moment. I could turn on the heating right now and make her really uncomfortable. But because I love her, I'm not gonna do that. So check out Taddo's stuff and there will be a video next week with Laura in it and lovely little Chloe as well. So make sure you pop back and watch that and let's get on with this Bubba Parts video. Oh, Tad! Don't put hot things next to your TRV. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna put a hot water bottle next to your TRV like that. That'd be absolutely mad. What I usually do is with a hot water bottle is put it between my thighs when I go to bed. No, I wouldn't be doing that with this at all. I wouldn't put it next to a TRV. But sometimes you'll have heat sources in the house. Uh, could be anything from a router being nearby, a TV, something like that. Anything that's gonna warm one of these up is going to shut it prematurely before the rest of the room gets hot. So don't make the mistake of popping something warm next to your TRV. Always remember that the TRV is not sensing the temperature of water in the radiator, it's sensing for the temperature of the air in the room. And if you artificially warm up that air next to the TRV, guess what, it's gonna shut, your radiator is not gonna get hot, and you are gonna get cold. Number three. You think your TRV's gone completely wrong. Now you're obviously seeing a bit of a theme here with radiators, it's always TRVs. Thermostatic radiator valves. Anyway, so, you're gonna take it off, aren't you? Oh, and because you don't know anything about what you're doing in the world of plumbing, because you haven't watched this video yet, you take it off and wow, the radiator comes on. You think, wow, I fixed it. Might as well chuck this in the bin. I've honestly had customers do this. They've chucked the TRV away or they've put it in a drawer or something. <sighs> if you do that, right, you are getting rid of the money saving aspect of having a thermostatic radiator valve on your radiator. What these are doing, like I said earlier on, are sensing for the temperature rise in the room. So as the room comes up to temperature, this slowly starts to shut off the flow of hot water from the boiler to the point where the boiler is hardly heating up any hot water in the house whatsoever to go to the radiators. That means the boiler turns off and you save gas or oil or electricity. So if you've taken your TRV off and that's come on, you have to think about how are you gonna fix that TRV? Often you can just replace the head by buying a new one, or you actually have to replace the whole body itself. But that's what I would say is the third thing that I come up against when I go to customers' houses, is they've taken the TRV off, or they've left it on five, which is like all the, all the highest temperature setting in the house, and they're not saving any more money on their heating. Number four. Right, if you're really thick, and you've been trying to vent air out your radiator, yeah? and nothing's coming out. Like I've honestly, I've had people do this and I've driven 40 or 50 minutes to their house 
to get this radiator working. They're like, oh, there's no air coming out. And I'm like, oh, it's blocked. Or we've run out of pressure. There's been a leak somewhere and we've dropped pressure in the system. Or the F&E tank is blocked, something like that. No, they've just not opened the radiator. We're clutching at straws on the stupidity that we come across. I don't, it's a bit harsh calling it stupid. You just don't know, but you do now because you watch this video. When you're about to vent the radiator, this one actually has an automatic air vent on here. But if you're going to get your key out, yeah, and nothing comes out, nip it up again and make sure that both the valves at the bottom are open. Sometimes they're not, and you've saved me a 15 minute drive to your house. Last and by not means least, I'm going to do this one in Northern accent. It's unbalanced radiators. Oh, God. Uh, you have to balance your radiators, it's very important. But what often happens is, is you've undone the lock shield end of the radiator and you've opened it all the way like you would a normal tap or something like that with a set of grips, yeah? And the radiator's come on and you're like, wow, fix that radiator. But the radiator upstairs is now cold. And one of the other radiators in that extension you just put in is also cold. That's because you've ruined the equilibrium the integral balance that we have to strike as plumbers and heating beasts on your heating systems. Imagine we've got one piece of pipe coming from the boiler, it goes through the pump, and that one piece of pipe has to equally distribute all its hot water to the radiators when they're all cooling. If you open up one radiator fully, more than the rest, it is going to take most of that heat and other radiators are going to go cold. I've done another video on how to balance your heating system and it's this one here. So you should click on that one now to find out more about how to balance your heating system, you silly, silly devils. <laughs>